G'day everyone and welcome back to my World of Warships training videos. I am your host Noppers and this is video number two in the series that explores the first hour of gameplay in World of Warships. This particular video is titled The Next 20 because it is quite literally the next 20 minutes of gameplay. We return to the US cruiser line and we're looking at the tier 2 Chester here. You can't tell me this thing doesn't look like the RMS Titanic. I know boats, but there are some subtle differences. Rose and Jack aren't sunning themselves on the forecastle, and it has a whole bunch of guns. Anyway, we're striving to unlock the next access level, which is random battles, or player versus player. For now, we remain in co-op, which is against AI bots. So let's not muck around. The ship is ready to go. Let's start a battle. Now, since we already saw this screen and everything about it in the first video, we're going to skip straight past it and get on with the pew-pew. And Mr. Wargaming Guy will be helpful again. He really is quite a helpful guy. Anyway, ship's till at a full M for the map. We bring up the map to have a look at where we are, top right. And now we look at the bottom left hand corner and I want you to look at the guns when they go green. So you can see the circles moving around. Now we're going to have three green circles on that right hand side. So three guns will be good to go. But the fourth gun, because it's on the other side of the ship and it can't turn around on a turret because it's mounted on the side of the ship, we can't get all four guns pointing in the direction we want. Here we've got an enemy that's appeared, so we can put two guns towards him and let the back gun spin around to aim at him as well. Or we can turn the ship, and because we were looking out to the right hand side before, we can turn the ship and get the guns aiming quicker, but we're still only going to get three. The big thing here to watch out for is running into your mates as you do that big 90 degree turn. Now we've got some eyes on this guy and we're going to punch some HE downrange. Poorly again. I always make sure I shoot badly on the first shot. Um, you know, try to be a little bit uh, like what I would expect of someone who hasn't played before. And we're still missing, so now that's just me being rubbish keep putting rounds into this guy he's turning broadside to us we've got a few rounds into him he's gone behind an island so now we're going to point him to the next ship now we're shooting this guy from nose on it means that the dispersion as you just saw will often mean we miss because the ship's profile is so narrow we're trying to get hits on target and we've got some there but it's hard when they are pointed on it's better to have them broadside to you so this guy here, we're going to aim his nose there and put some good rounds into him, and that's great. What I want to do now, though, is show you armor piercing. Look at the bottom center. You'll see a timer going down, and there's a green box around AP with a green number two lit up. That's armor piercing ammunition. It's different to high explosive, and to find out the difference, you just have to use the control key and hover over those round types to see the differences. The purpose of armor piercing is it does more damage, but it also has a bit more chance to ricochet and things like that. And you'll see some of that in the gunnery I do here. You'll see ricochets, which are far right ribbons. What you tend to get ricochets on more is if you do very nose-on shots, although you can penetrate pretty easy sometimes. This guy here, I'm going to shoot and miss because it just seems to be my gunnery for this game. I'm also going to have a look there. A bit of situational awareness. I noticed the edge of the map was coming up, so I'm turning my ship around. Um, I'm putting rounds into the side of this guy, and the reason I'm using armor piercing is because you want to try and get what's called citadels. You can shoot them through the front like I am that guy at the back. And I'm doing that to deliberately show you what the, the profile of rounds can be uh, and rounds missed like that one was aiming straight at him but it just completely missed him uh, whereas that one went straight through nice penetration blew him the hell up this guy here wearing a few well yep see there's a ricochet so armor piercing you, again you're better off googling this stuff on rounds to learn the differences and you'll find your own play style um, armor piercing is really when you've got side shots on a target or when they're running away it's also pretty good like this um, you want to use it when it's class for class and tier for tier so if I'm in a tier 2 cruiser and I'm fighting against a tier 2 cruiser or a tier 1 cruiser that's perfect if I'm fighting against a tier 3 or tier 4 mm. it's a little harder but before I get flamed by the internet on this stuff, because everybody has an opinion about 
when you shoot, what rounds and so on. Citadels are what you're after. You want to get side shots, and I was so desperate to get a side shot in this game and get a citadel to show you it. It's a black ribbon that comes up, uh, but the gods went with me. I just kept getting ricochets like just there. Citadels are the biggest damage per shot that you get against an enemy ship. So, you know, if I'm cruising in a battleship, for example, I've got these big guns, big rounds, and I've got this cruiser of, you know, 15 kilometers away or something. I want to put a couple of big rounds down range and just smack that bad boy up. And that's the, the idea behind armor piercing rounds is that you can do really big damage and, you know, that big meaty explosion and so on. But it carries some sorts of risks, as I said, with ricochets and things like that. All right, we're going to have a little bit of a look at the map here and see what's going on. We're sort of losing track of enemy. They've fallen behind us a bit there. And uh, yeah, we're trying to get around to get some gunnery back on target. I'm still using armor piercing at the moment because you know, it's cruiser versus cruiser and I'm hoping to actually get damage. What's important is you can hear this siren going on in the background there. That's indicating that someone's capping our base, which is the big green circle. I just got a sneaky shot in on that guy there. Um, over the hills it's important to also learn how to use the angles and understand your trajectory as I said on the previous video and pick the gaps between rocks like that and try and shoot over hills and things you'll find a lot of people play cruises and they hide behind rocks and, and islands and shoot way over the top on big arcing trajectories um, you know it's it's a learning curve each map is unique you'll find the positions you want to be in Nobody's shooting at me at the moment, so I'm quite happily just sailing along, presenting a broadside target while I wipe out a few enemy and getting as many rounds down range as possible. What we are going to focus on now is that big cloud of smoke you can see on the water over there in front of us. That is where a destroyer is currently hiding. Destroyers are another class of ship in the game, and we'll have a look at them as we unlock them. And destroyers have an ability to drop a smoke screen and hide in it. So over there at the moment, there's someone hiding in a smoke screen that we can't see. He's appeared either by shooting or just by being in visual range. So he's had concealment that's been compromised by the distance he is away from the enemy. And he's appeared and now he's disappeared because he's probably driven behind the island or he's reconcealed or whatever. So he's stuffing around over there driving backwards and forwards or something and we're going to try and take this guy out now you need to be careful with destroyers because they have torpedoes and they're a spread of torpedoes so it's not just one or two it's usually groups of three or four or even five sometimes and they have fairly long ranges um, I've got one of my regular destroyers that I play that has a 12 kilometer torpedo range it's such fun it annoys a lot of people while we're focusing in on this guy we're thinking about that sort of stuff we're thinking about where he's going to drive to and we're thinking about his guns and our guns and all that and we're not watching the map and hello there's a teammate so let's give him a blast of the horn let him know yep you shouldn't have run into me but to be fair it wasn't really anyone's fault there we were probably both fixated on the enemy trying to kill this guy and i was you know taking an angle to get my broadside under him. The destroyer was trying to get there as quick as possible to be able to engage. It happens to the best of us, you just deal with it. Okay, I'm shooting blind here now, you can see. There's a ship there and I just hit him, but there's a white line on the water. And as we zoom back out, we saw that it was actually smoke. So we knew the enemy was in there and we shot into that smoke and we hit him and now he's driven off. And he's driven actually straight into our mate. Uh, so when you're zoomed in, this, the line on the water denotes the smoke. What's going to occur now, of course, though, is we have ships crawling all over him. You see his torps there off to the left, the little triangles. And boom, thanks very much, he's out, game's over. We had a bit of a victory. Let's see how I did. We had a couple of kills, a few rounds on target. Uh, I know a whole bunch missed. Yeah, look at those numbers, not, not ideal. Um, it happens. But we did okay, we've, we've scored okay. And we have a bit of a look here, we're about the middle of the pack, that's about where I expected to be. So as we depart the battle screen, you can see our reward to collect. That's something Wargaming have bought in 
so that you're encouraged to log on each day and collect a reward. Lots of games are doing it. We then exit to port and you can see that a new ship module is available. So we open that up and see that the modules are available to be unlocked based on the availability of ship experience at the top right corner of the modules window. We hover over the module, look at the price. Yep, we can afford that. Click on it. And then we spend the in-game credits to buy it. In-game credits top right of the screen. And now we've got a new hull. What does it mean? Well, we have more hit points, a bit of a change in armor. But most importantly, we have six guns now instead of four. They're still smaller caliber because we haven't purchased the 152mm upgraded turret module, mainly because we can't afford it right now in ship experience, but six guns is always going to be better than four. Hit point increase is also a good thing though because we can now take more damage and survive longer in battle. What we can also do is go and have a look at the old hull, and now I'm inserting an image here so we can see the lovely brown decking and funnel work. It's nicely covered in armor now on the new upgraded version, helping us survive a bit more. I think what we should do though is go and try out the Diana Lima, which is the free tier 2 premium Russian cruiser we received last video. Straight away you can see the glaring obvious difference, that camouflage scheme. We'll discuss that at a later time. But there are other differences. So we look at the Chester again and look at the artillery, noting that we have the 6x127 mil guns now on the new hull. The Diana Lima has 8x152mm guns. And as we zoom around the ship, we can see that there's three mounted on this side at the front, centre and side. Then at the back we've got two more there, we spin around the other side of the ship, one more, and then up the front again, two more on the left side there. What this means, a total of eight, and we've got lots of options for where we shoot. This ship is going to give us free ship experience when we take it into battle, which we can use on any ship or any module for any ship. And that's useful particularly if we have a premium ship that we are good at, which earn a, earns us more experience and credits. Okay, let's go and look at the tech tree. The Russian one will come up, but you know, just close that and go to the United States one and we can use that free ship experience to help us unlock all of these other ones that we're trying to do like the battleship line and that sort of stuff. For now though enough talk time for a battle. Skip through this window again we don't want to see it all again straight into the battle interface and let's go. And I'm going to map out here a little bit of pardon the pun uh, where I'm going to go so you can see that I use the shift click to actually map this out uh, that would be autopilot I'm using there if I left it as it is and the ship will steer itself. I've put my tiller up to full and we're going to weave our way through those islands and we're going to take this forward. But what is important here is have a look at those guns in that bottom left corner. They're everywhere. That's great because it gives us a whole range of options when it comes to our maneuverability whilst putting firepower downrange. So on the angle I'm looking at right now, you can see that we're only getting three, maybe four of the guns that are able to track onto the target. The reason is because that back center gun can't turn all the way around. So we've got four facing forward, that's that's nice. And we can put a few rounds down range on this guy with those guns. We noticed there was someone off to the right though. So we can switch the targeting around and we've still got guns aimed and also the right side guns or the starboard side guns come into play as we turn our ship and they're already loaded and ready to go and so you could weave a little bit left and right with the nose and sort of rotate guns around if you wanted to but I, I'm firing you know, single shots here and letting each gun individually reload and be shot you really want to try and get a full broadside together um, old mate there just got hit by a torpedo by the way. So here we go, we're starting to open up those four guns onto this target. There's some more torps, those little upside down triangles. Avoid them at all costs. Um, lots of good brownstone gun range. And as we spin the ship around more to the left, that rear turret's going to start coming into play. But what you also see is all these little guns firing. That's our secondaries. And there they all are, boom, 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 boom. Secondaries, you hold the Alt key and click on the enemy target and your secondaries will shoot. Uh, we've taken a bit of a torpedo there uh, and you saw that I was flooding a bit and I hit the repair key to stop that. So there was so much going on in that battle sequence it was kind of hard to track some of it. We've got people left of us, people right, our secondary guns are shooting all over the place. We are being true to form and getting as many guns as we can pointed at this one target out of our broadside. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. There we are, all nice and great. Bam, 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 bam. And 
that gives us four out of five hits that was good and our secondaries are still chipping away at him as well and we keep turning the ship around and try and keep that flat broadside to get rounds on him there is a danger here being full broadside to a target that he will get some particularly armor piercing rounds into us there citadel so he could do that to us which takes off a massive amount of uh, our hit points but in the end we managed to get him you do have to be incredibly careful and remember that it is a risk that you are choosing if you point your broadside to a target we're going to try and sneak some rounds through here through this gap and get that guy we've just missed him unfortunately um this is probably a bit of a side thing which is just knowing the terrain um, <laughs> knowing how to shoot we didn't have him locked properly so our rounds instead of doing that nice big high trajectory over the top they actually just plowed straight into the bottom part there so having a bit of a look now about where we are on the map we can see we're kind of pulling out of the fight a bit everyone's up that way so we'll spin ourselves around and the beauty of this ship as i said before it doesn't have uh, turrets specifically it has just guns all around it so no matter which way we're pointing we're going to have guns ready to fire pretty much or able to bear onto target so let's sneak a few more rounds through this gap in the, the islands here onto this guy uh, we're trying a bit of armor piercing now we're getting a few overpens we're getting a few penetrations i really want some more citadels that'd be nice so i'm aiming around the water line this again look up guides on how to shoot where to shoot on enemy ships um, some days I'm really good at citadels and other days I can't seem to get a single trick and it makes me sad. Uh, some torpedoes running through there at that guy, so, uh, you know, avoid them. They're nowhere near us, but uh, torps can do quite a bit of damage and they tend to be in tight groups. Um, just shoot an island because we didn't like the way it looked at us. What I'm going to do here, though, is quickly skip past a bit of bad gunnery on my behalf bring you around to the base capping scenario and torpedoes and so on back in real time now and we've started capping the enemy base as you can see there and this destroyer is also capping our base by hitting him with a round we get a green ribbon of defended which means we've sort of reset his capture of our base a bit and we're going to keep putting rounds into him and getting those defended ribbons and stopping him from capping us out at the same time we're capping but we can have ours reset too that is what i wanted to show you those torpedoes suddenly appeared when we were zoomed in shooting at him now i knew they were coming and that's why i turned my nose towards him which did reduce the number of guns that were there shooting at him but it also meant that i was the narrowest profile for these torps that are coming through and you can see how tight that grouping is well it would be a disaster if i copped all of those broadside but being nose on meant that i might have only got one or two that hit me if i wasn't sharp enough and i would have survived that so this guy is being pretty sneaky he's coming out he's lobbing off torps and he's getting back in behind that island there's some more torps that he's sent and again if i was broadside to that four torpedoes thanks for coming I was I was gone I'm gonna sit here on the cap I'm gonna keep trying to put rounds over the edge of the island here just get myself nudging forward without overstepping the boys there we can see which is the edge of the cap circle and just there we go we've got him now and of course he vanished but we're gonna shoot blind and we've managed to hit him he can see me because I'm pretty close shooting he's come out of the smoke aggressive play but Maybe my gunnery's improved, hopefully. Uh, got four or five rounds hitting him at a time here. Got other mates here helping us out, so just give him everything we've got, including our secondaries, and again, it's game over. So we'll go through the battle recap. That's some pretty good coin, lots of ribbons. Top of the tree, happy with that. It's a good ship, the Dana. Uh, lots of rounds downrange, armor piercing and HE this time, plenty of hits, and then the potential damage that we could have taken because we were out there getting shot at a fair bit that's pretty good we've managed to unlock random battles now access level three unlocked select random battles and fight against other players to unlock the next access level play two battles 
cool so random battles are unlocked there they are that'll do us for now we'll wrap up by going on with a little video i filmed last night which was after i died i'd put a whole heap of torpedoes down range into some smoke where i knew there was an enemy ship and you've got to be careful because broadside means you die thanks for coming see you next time